Um, I have a special uniform that I wore today. It is my, now my daughter is embarrassed by this shirt, but one of my sweet clients gave this to me. Can you guys see this? It says, preparing for booty duty. I am ready to roll. I hope you guys are too. I hope you brought your buns. Um, I hope that you're motivated by this <laughs> to get up and move more. So let's get, we're going to move Carol over here. I don't know where, where, I don't know what you guys can see. Hey, would you guys let me know? Can you see um, all the, can you just see my screen or can you see Carol's name in the upper right hand corner? Not that I care about Carol's name. I just want to make sure that you guys, I'm going to tuck it. I'm going to tuck it away. Um, because I want to make sure that it doesn't hide the screen while you guys are trying to learn all this stuff. So if you can just see my screen and it should say how to get the butt you want and other awesome info about your booty, ah, it just went away. Um, let me know if that's all you see. If you see a little Carol Jean at the top, I would like to know that also. That will give me an idea. It's, it's kind of funny using this um, service because you never quite know what someone's seeing on the other side. So one little person in the chat, just pop in there with what it is that you're seeing would be super awesome. Jen, you're our representative. Come on, Jennifer. <laughs> Tell us what you got. Do you see the screen? Okay, the right screen and video. Oh, you, okay, so you see my shiny skin. <laughs> Char, thank you. Okay, good deal. Okay, let's go. It's one o'clock. You guys got things to do. Hopefully you have a nice, healthy lunch in front of you and a gigantic pink oh, bottle geez. of water because that's the way to roll. So um, I am glad that you guys found time to join me today. That is so sweet of you to spend some time with me. And I hope that this webinar, uh, my goal is for you to walk away with this webinar with like maybe a couple of ahas, like, oh, I never knew that. Like, I hope you get a bunch of those. But I also hope that you're, you are going to have a few workouts that I have already shared in the chat. I promised a little bonus this morning. If you guys notice the very first comment or two in the chat, is bonus workouts. That's a link to a package of little workouts. They're PDFs that I gave you that will be great for high intensity interval training for your core and for your booty. Because I thought, well, that's not really fair just to talk about butts and how to work them out and not to share a little bit more with you. So that's your little bonus for showing up live. So thank you for that. So we're going to jump into how to get the butt you want and other amazing information about your buns. <laughs> Okay, so every time you giggle on the webinar, I want you to um, put in the chat, maybe somebody could put every time I giggle, because it's just funny thinking that you got a bunch of people gathered to talk about their butts. <laughs> so good. All right, so put, put a little laughy face or giggle every time something makes you giggle. That would be funny. Okay, so let's go. So I want to, hopefully, my slides will work here. It doesn't seem to be working, so give me a second. Ah. Hang on a minute. Sorry about that. I was all ready to roll. And it's stuck. It's not going anywhere. So <sighs> for now, while I figure out how this goes, you guys pop it in in the comments. Where are you from? How'd you hear? Oops, we don't want that much. How'd you hear about the oh man? <laughs> How'd you hear about the webinar? If you have any questions as we go, um, that would be awesome. Okay, what I got to figure out here is why, maybe, maybe it's this one. Let me check this out. There we go. Maybe that's it. Let's see. Ah, this could be terrible. Hang tight for me. It's not letting me, um, oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay, I'm just going to have to hand click it. It's going, we're going the wrong way. Okay, there we go. Here we are. We're back in action. Okay, so how to get the butt you want, other awesome info about your buds, bit over that. So I want to know if this is you. Look how cute that little girl is. You want to squeeze your cheeks. So I want you, if this, this webinar is for you, if you are that girl that's just been like frustrated because you cannot seem to get your butt to respond to faithful training and tons of squats and hip thrusts and lunges and deadlifts and you feel like you're doing all the right things or maybe you don't even know if you're doing the right things. Maybe you're feeling like, like I'm just kind of shooting in the dark hoping for some results and I don't actually know if I'm doing the right things. Um, I'm just grabbing random workouts and hoping they're going to fly. Then that's totally you. If you're discouraged and frustrated, I'm sorry, but hopefully that will end today and we will get you squared away and get you a good vision for what you should be doing. Because I, I totally know how this goes. 
you know, I get this with my clients. A lot of times they, they have the drive to do it. They have the goal and they want to get these results, but they, they feel like they're just like slapping things together and they're not sure about whether they're doing it properly or not. And that totally makes sense because it's not what you do for a living. That's why I'm here because that's what I do for a living. So I'm going to take a quick second to introduce myself to those of you that I don't know because I saw lots of names that I don't know on that list which is super great. I love to meet new people. So thanks for being here. So this is me. I'm Missy Dallas and I have a bachelor's of exercise physiology from St. Mary's College in California. Beautiful school. Um, I'm a certified personal trainer. I've been doing this for 26 years, maybe more now because I keep forgetting to do the math, you know, as the years roll by, but it's been a really long time. And I can tell you over the years, so many things have changed in the fitness world. <laughs> Number one, we used to actually have textbooks instead of cell phones where we could just look anything up. So our access to new information is huge now. Also, um, information has completely changed from back in the day when I used to start training to now. It's crazy. In fact, sometimes I feel like I should apologize to people that I trained way back in the day. I'm a precision nutrition coach. Um, I'm also a licensed massage therapist. So I love that combination of two things because it helps me, especially when I can get my hands on somebody, it really helps me to feel where their muscle imbalances are um, and where maybe they're super tight, things that we need to then cross over in the gym and create balance for because it's really all about balance. Um, and I am a certified behavior change specialist. I'm going to move that a little bit. And what that is, is basically I just... Um, help people learn how ask the right questions, really get into know, understand people, what motivates them, what does not motivate them, and help them figure out ways to get around their obstacles and change behaviors to new and healthier habits. And that's a part of my, my, um, my business, my career, what you could call it a job. It's hard to call it a job when you love it so much um, that I've been really enjoying lately um, in the last five years of my business. That is really the psychology part has really been a lot of fun. I'm a gym owner here in Sandpoint studio. Uh, in Sandpoint, I have Missy Dallas and Fitness Studios. My husband built me a private gym and massage room here on our property on Gooby Road. So if you're local, we'd love to come uh, for you to come and visit and share this awesome place. Um, you're a groupie. Who just said that? <laughs> Who is that? Oh, you got it. Okay, there you go. Sorry, I was cooking an artichoke. <laughs> That's cute, Jen. I'm going to take a quick large. How to get your booty small, upper left corner of your face. Oh, okay. oh thank you. Okay. Um, and that must have been Shar that said she's a Missy groupie because <laughs> she's one of my girls. Is that? Yep, it is. All right. Um, so, um, and I'm a mom of three. I have a 23 year old, a 15 year old and a 13 year old. And it's really cool to have the gym here because now they can start using the gym, which is awesome. Um, except the one that's off to college that I never get to see enough. So that's enough about me. You guys came here to talk about your butts. I just wanted to tell you why you should listen to me because I know some things. <laughs> okay. So, we are moving on. We're going to jump right into it. Hopefully if my, oh man, there we go. All right. So let's talk about why you need a strong butt. I know most of you came here because you want that cute little heart shaped, shapely, like a uh, butt cleavage butt. And that's huge. And we're going to talk, well, that's, sorry, <laughs> terrible thing to say when you're talking about butts. It's not huge. It's very important is what I meant to say. Um, we are going to talk about that, but I cannot go on any longer without telling you why you need a strong butt. We also are going to talk about function, okay? Because here at my gym, yes, I want everybody to feel awesome and look awesome, but I want you to function awesome too, because that is what's going to carry you for a long, long way. I'm working with a lot of ladies lately in their 50s, 60s, and one creeping up on 70, and they're just starting to talk about all the aches and pains. And at 47 myself, I, I'm sad to say that uh, the aches and pains are starting to creep in. And so form and function are both very important. So if you're in your 20s, I know form is like, yeah, it's all about that. But later down the road, function is huge. So this is why you need a strong butt is that it supports you when you stand, when you walk, when you run and you step. I'm going to show you pictures of those glute muscles and how that works. It's really important for good posture too. We often get very schlumpy, schlumpy. Um, and if our butt is not supporting our pelvis, our hips, then we tend to get into the scooped posture. Um, important for a healthy back. So a strong butt is essential 
for a healthy back. So if you're having back pain, we're going to talk a little bit about that too as we go. Um, they look great. Strong butts look amazing. They hold our pants up. I forgot to list that. That's pretty important. They hold our pants up. They give us power and movements, especially, for example, in running or um, climbing, mountain climbing. What do you call it? Hiking. Yeah, when we take a step forward, so I take a step forward with my right foot, it's the power of my right cheek that's going to propel my body forward. So in running and climbing and stepping up steps, it's also very important for hip stability. For example, if I, this is my hip, if I have, um, you know, one cheek that's tighter than the other, it's going to cause a little tilting in my pelvis, which is then going to transfer all the way up my body or even down toward my knees. So really important to have balance on both sides of your cheeks. We sometimes think of our butt as one. It's actually two sides, two muscles. Technically, there are three glute muscles that make up one of the largest uh, muscle groups in the human body, which is our glutes, but there are three glute muscles, um, and these are the roles that they play. So I'm going to dive into uh, the booty type test first because it's super fun, and then we're going to go back and I'm going to teach you about the glute muscles, what they do. I'm going to give you the best exercises for these, um, and I'm going to show you how at the end, I'm going to show you how you can get amazing butt butts. All right, so are you guys ready for the booty type test? This is kind of fun. Tell me in the chat. Are you ready for this? Um, let's see. I just want to take a Oh, there we go. Um, oh, which gym? Oh, so I think I answered that. It's Missy Ballison Fitness Studios. It's up on Gooby Road on the corner of Gooby and Upland. Um, oh, okay, Carol, you got it figured out. Okay, sorry about that. I'm going to keep checking in on the chat periodically. Um, as we, I think one more came in. Okay, are you guys ready? Ready for the booty type test? Speaking of which, this test, you don't have to write anything down, but there might be some exercises I'm going to show you later that you might want to write down. So if you can have time now uh, to grab a pen, that might be handy later. Okay, so we're going to go into a couple little buzz. Oh, buns! <laughs> I could not come up with any like clothed bun pictures that were. Let me, let me just tell you really quick. I'm really sensitive to. Um, the ladies that I train are intelligent. I, I don't ever, or I try very hard not to post pictures of, except for this upcoming booty boot camp I'm running, I'll tell you guys at the end about, um, it's, I don't like to post a lot of pictures with like super ripped chicks and bikinis and because, I mean, yes, it looks nice, but most of my ladies aren't necessarily training to, you know, they want to look great. They want to look good naked, but we're not running down the road half dressed, most of them. So, um, I, so, and that's why a lot of times I actually don't do a lot of before and after pictures with my clients. So just, this is a little side note. I know that they're super popular right now and everywhere you turn, you're seeing somebody's before and after picture. But when, um, I talked to you a little bit in a bit about posture and whatnot, um, I feel that those, to me, those before and after pictures aren't super trustworthy. The very few of them, there's a lot of things you can do with your body to make those before and after pictures look totally different than we carry ourselves in the regular day. I also feel like um, um, our progress, it can be kind of personal, at least my type of clients. I, I don't know that they all want their half-dressed body spread all over the internet. So, um, so these are the pictures we have, <laughs> and they're kind of funny. Okay. So this is the O-shaped booty. We're going to talk about four types of booties. Um, the O-shaped booty. So I want you kind of recognizing, that's kind of actually a pretty cute booty, um, to, I want you recognizing where are you? Because if we want to set a goal for where we want to go, we have to kind of get a picture of where we are today. Okay. So you know you have an O-type booty when the top of your hip bone is lower than your belly button. Okay. Think about that for a second. The top of your hip bones is lower than your belly button, okay? Um, you have even distribution of fat throughout your cheeks. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Your buttocks. Um, for example, the bottom doesn't hold more fat than the top or vice versa. So you can see, it's, I don't know if you guys can see my arrow here, but it's just a nice little round booty like the shape of an O, okay? So, and it's not flat. So if you were to turn sideways, you have a little, a, a little booty poke out, a little bump out rather than a, a cracker butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's falling straight down. Okay, so that's an O type booty. We're going to talk a little more about those. We have an H booty. Okay, so here's the thing. Now you're going to walk around town looking at people's butts and identifying 
what kind of food do they have? And I'll tell you, I actually instinctively tend to do that. And I, I'm kind of embarrassed to say it, but as part of my job, it's not from a judgmental way, but I see bodies. Sometimes I see bodies without skin. Like I see muscles walking down the street <laughs> and I always try to look at, you know, how they stride and like an imbalance. Oh, they have a leg longer than the other or their shoulders are torqued or whatever. So I see booties and I, in my mind, it's good practice for me to see booties and think, what exercises would I prescribe for that booty to reshape it? Because it's just good for me to practice it all the time. So if you ever see me looking at your booty, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my job. Okay. So you know you have an H booty when the top of your hip bones are high or even sit above the belly button. Okay. So that's the difference between the H and the O, right? Is that you can see in this picture that the, I kind of call this like the, um, the high hip. Um, and the low hip. So we've got the high hip that's right under the waist and the low hip that's right across the center of the bum. So when I take measurements with my clients that have an H booty, I always measure the high hip and that lower hip, the, the widest part across the cheeks. Um, that would be the low hip. And then the high hip would be that little extra little bump we get sometimes around just below the waist. Because the goal is if we're trying to shape change the shape of this particular booty is we want that low hip to kind of start to disappear a little bit. So um, just a little note to yourself, if you have this booty, make sure you measure. Um, hopefully you take measurements because measurements are so good for us um, when we have goals. Um, let me just check the chat again real quick here. Carol's ready. Okay, everyone's ready. Okay. Um, so you have an even distribution of, uh, of fat amongst your cheeks off both sides. Um, it's kind of like an O, but just it's you have more fat distribution up higher. Um, so it's a little bit square. Okay. So that is the H booty. You don't have to put in the comments what kind of booty you have, but you know, might be nice to know you're participating. Okay, um, you have an A type booty or pear booty. Okay, I'm just gonna say this is my booty. <laughs> um, you are more likely to store fat at the bottom of your cheek, so they, it just feels heavier on the bottom. It's shaped like an A or a pear. Okay, this is a lot of women because women typically tend to store fat in their hips, thighs, and buns. Um, because of estrogen, that's a whole other webinar. But um, so you have more fat in the bottom of your cheeks while your low back kind of creates a curve so it flattens in. Um, so your butt has more of a pear shape, so it's slim on top, showing off a waist um, and more fullness on the bottom. The A shaped booty is genetically prone to hold more fat at the bottom of the cheeks of your bum while there's less fat at the top. Okay, so. Um, it, do you have an O booty? Do you have an O booty? Let's see. Okay, moving on. Well, I'm drawing lines on this picture. I didn't mean to do that. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Every time I've done a webinar lately, I've had these two lines. I don't know where they're coming from. Um, okay, so last one. Do you have an inverted V booty? Now, I see this actually a lot in older women, it seems like that they kind of change shape in, in time. So the top of your hip bone is lower than your belly button. So the top of your hip bone, lower than your belly button. I always have to pause and think about that. You're more likely to store fat at the top of your cheeks and your lower cheeks don't have as much substance, let's call it. Um, they're smaller and skinnier. So um, your butt is more of a, like an upside down triangle shape, pointing down, okay? So there is your booty type test. Just kind of fun to know what kind of booty you have because this is going to help you just have a visual of where do I need to start shaping? So let's take this for example. Um, okay, let me go back. I'm going to go back here to, oop, wrong one. Oh, darn, it's not going to let me go back. Ah, let's see. There we go. Mm, it's not letting me go. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's just paused here. I want to go back a little bit. Now, the O type booty. I, I think the O booty is awesome. Um, the only thing with an O booty is that it could tend to be flat. Like when you turn to the side, it looked like a cracker butt, which in which case we need to build a little more um, upper booty or sorry, mid booty. So gluteus maximus, which I'll show you in a minute. The H booty, we need to learn, lose a little fat at the top and probably build a little bit of cleavage right at the top. Sorry, sorry, I have to use this terminology right at the top of the crack <laughs> to make almost like a little cleavage so it kind of rounds out the shape of the H booty, okay? Um, the pear booty, 
Um, now, again, this just depends on what kind of shape you like. The pear booty probably just needs to shape a little, uh, shed a little fat overall and also build some cleavage at the top to kind of make it more of a circular booty. Um, and then the H booty, we need to build a little bit more booty at the bottom of the cheeks and build some strength there so that it can kind of round the booty out. So you see what I'm saying? If you know what kind of booty you have, then it's a lot easier to know where you're going with it, right? How do we get so serious about that? So funny. Okay, now let's move on. Let's learn about the glutes. Okay, I just talked about three different muscles that we really need to focus on when training the glutes. And I'm going to show you how to know which glute muscle you're training. When you're putting a workout program together, it's really important to make sure you include movements for each of these muscles, okay? Or you're going to have an imbalanced booty, okay? And I'm going to include a fourth muscle in a little bit here that's not actually a booty muscle, but that can really be hindering what's going on with your butt. All right, so on the left side of the screen, we have the gluteus maximus. That's like the biggest one. That's our cheeks, basically, right? Super strong muscle. Um, then in the middle here, we have the gluteus medius. Okay, the gluteus medius sits up high, oh. right under the hip bones. Um, the gluteus medius is really responsible for pelvic stability. We're going to dive into that a little bit later, too. Um, and then the gluteus minimus sits beneath the gluteus medius. So I'm looking at the picture on the far right, um, and it has its own special actions as well. So keeping in mind that it doesn't do just one motion, for example, the bicep, curls, just one motion. The glutes, because you've got that hip socket that's a ball, um, uh, a ball socket, it can rotate in lots of different directions. And in order to get that booty to shape right, we need to move it and work it in multiple directions. All right. So here are the best, this might be where you want to jot a note down. Here are the best moves to uh, train each portion of your booty. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, there's my one bikini picture. I just had to put one in. <laughs> All right. Okay, so gluteus maximus. We're going to dive into this one a little bit. So gluteus maximus, it's your cheeks. It extends your hip, which means I tried to not get super nerdy sciencey terms with you here. Basically, it takes your leg and pushes it behind you. So if I'm standing on two feet, I take my right leg and push it back behind me toward the wall behind me. That's extending my hip. Okay. It also laterally rotates, which means if I'm standing with two feet side by side, I turn my toes outward um, from the hip joint. My gluteus maximus does that as well. It also stabilizes the hip joint. I'm going to get a little nerdy on these because some of you that have hip issues or back issues might be familiar with some of these terms and it might make you go, oh, okay, I need to work that muscle to help stabilize my hip joint. So can you see in the picture where I circled, I have an arrow and a blue circle. Um, uh, the bottom note that says stabilizes the, hip, the SI joint, that's called your sacroiliac joint. That is where the flat bone, that hard bone in your low, low back, like right above your butt cheeks, that flat bone meets your hip bones, okay? And there's a little ligament connection there. And when that gets out of whack, that can cause a lot of trouble for people in their back and their hip, and it radiates pain all around the hip and the back area. So the gluteus maximus is really important for stabilizing that joint. So if you have uh, been to the chiropractor over and over and are having trouble with that joint, um, strengthening the muscles around that joint can be very helpful to your recovery. Okay, so here are the two best exercises for you. Jot those down. All of these exercises that I'm showing here are incorporated into my um, booty belly burn boot camp, which I'm gonna reference periodically throughout because I'm going to tell you all about it at the end of the webinar. Um, the front plank, that top one is the front plank with hip extension. And all she's doing there is she's in a perfect plank form. She looks fantastic. And then she's taking her right leg and lifting it up. Now, notice she doesn't have a huge bend in her knee. She's trying to, she's a little bit of a bend there, but she's trying to lift it up using her cheek muscle. Okay. Um, and then the second X, so she would go alternating side to side on that. So a plank. So she'd lift that right leg, hold it, and then release it, and then lift the left side, hold it, and then release it. And you really want to get a good burn. We're going to talk a little bit about that mind connection with the muscles. And then the second one is the glute squeeze. So basically she's just laying on her tummy. I couldn't find the same girl in the same picture. <laughs> she's laying on her tummy and she's lifting her buns 
and squeezing her buns. This is a, a great activator for the glutes. It's called priming the glutes. I'll talk about that method later, but remember this exercise, that glute squeeze exercise is great for priming the glutes um, and getting those sleepy butt muscles awake, okay? So those are your two best exercises for your cheeks. So somebody that has like a flat bum, like an O bum that's flat, you know, from the side view, those would be great because you got to build up a little roundness in that butt, okay? That's from the form perspective, but from the function perspective, very important to have strong gluteus maximus muscles. Okay, gluteus medius. So in the picture, you can see he lays underneath that gluteus maximus. He's kind of up at the top of your hips just below your hip bone but he's at the top and what he does is externally rotate the leg so we said before that the gluteus maximus does this too which is turning the toes outward from the hip joints i'm standing feet straight ahead and then i turn out use my hip muscles to turn my leg outward okay we also have abduction what that means is if i'm standing straight ahead toes pointing straight ahead i'm just going to take that right leg and pull it up from the side so if you can see my arm that's that's abduction of my arm but the gluteus medius abducts the leg it just takes the leg away from the midline of the body so it does that motion um, it's really useful in single leg standing so like a single leg squat um, when we step upstairs, for example i take my right leg and i put it on the step above me and when i do that I'm mean, gonna get a little tilt in my pelvis. Well, the gluteus and medius, if it's strong enough, is gonna help, help me balance that out so I'm not putting too much torque on my pelvis. Um, it's part of the stance phase of walking. So that would be when I take my right foot forward, step forward, and then start to press my body weight into that right leg as I'm swinging my left leg forward. Um, I am using my gluteus medius there. So think about this too. When you're walking upstairs or hiking or wa even walking and you have one gluteus medius that's like super, super tight or maybe it's really weak or inactive, that's really going to cause a lot time after time after time a lot of torque on the body. Um, also, a weak gluteus medius can cause um, IT band syndrome. That's a big, thick band of tissue that runs down the side of your leg. Like, really common problem for people. Um, and then that then can cause knee problems because that IT band runs all, I don't can you guys see my little arrow here on the screen? I don't know. It runs all the way down the side of the um, hip bone. It hold attaches up here, runs all the way down the side to your knee. So on. if you're having a weakness up here okay, and now, your IT band's really tight, it's going to cause some pretty irritating torque on the knee and cause some knee issues. Um, earlier in the slide before about why you need strong glutes knee issues was one of the one of the reasons also piriformis syndrome so piriformis i don't have a really great close-up picture of that it's a muscle right in your cheek it goes from your hip the outer part of your hip and kind of runs straight across your butt cheek in a horizontal pattern over to the wait, sacrum wait until um, which is a big flat that. bone in your just above your cheeks oh there we go um, Jennifer says, I have piriformis. What is that? Pain from an injury a few years ago. Perfect timing for your question, okay, Jen. Uh, for, sorry. Okay, I, <laughs> you I can see the arrow. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Char. Gonna, okay, um, when I was lifting a kettlebell, I get massages to relieve the pain, but are there exercises I should do or avoid? Ah, oh, awesome. I'm going to hit that and a little okay. bit. Mm, I'll, I'll throw that in. Call me in 45. Actually, I'll throw that in right now because we're talking about piriformis. Bye. All right. So piriformis syndrome, I'm glad you can see my arrow. So it runs across here. Um, it is really um, painful and just really can be debilitating and slow a person down. Here's one of the problems with piriformis syndrome is that you have a big, huge nerve called your sciatic nerve. I'm sure most of us have heard of it. Should have put pictures into this. I will in my next round. Sciatic nerves comes out here where my arrow is and comes all the way down, and it's huge. It's actually in college we dissected cadavers. The pier, the not piriformis, the sciatic nerve is about as big as my thumb is around when it leaves the hip. So by the time it runs behind this piriformis muscle, it's still pretty big. And when that piriformis muscle is tight, it can often pinch down on the sciatic nerve, causing a lot of pain. Um, so one thing that you can do, I didn't go into depth. Um, in this webinar, but I do in the um, booty belly burn boot camp, but I'll, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek of that for Jennifer. Um, so 
if you have tight muscles, such as that piriformis uh, muscle, when, uh, in order to, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this later, but in order to get that, so a tight muscle is, a lot of times we think, oh, it's tight, it's short, it's strong, not necessarily. A lot of times a really tight muscle is actually very weak. It's struggling so much to protect or to, to um, hold tight and hold this knot in there that it's not even really functioning. It's often inactive. Okay, so that's going to cause a cheek imbalance for you because that muscle is inactive, but it's also tight and causing you pain. So what I would do, Jennifer, is um, get a little ball. Oh, I don't have one in here. I should. I'm in my massage room, but get a ball like a tennis ball. I like to use a lacrosse ball. Um, the other day, I bought these little tiny tennis balls yesterday just at the grocery store for kittens, and I've been using those as rollers. So what you want to do first, anytime you have a tight knot, uh, a lot of us are going to have tight knots in our hips and our glutes and all along that area because those are stabilizing our pelvis, so it's really common to have tightness there. You want to release the knot first. So um, you want to think of it like a rope. So right now we have a climbing rope in the gym for the Spartan ladies and there's one knot in that rope. Okay. So if you can see my hands here latch, this is the knot in your butt cheek. Okay. And if I stretch on that piriformis and I pull both ends or any muscle at all, I pull both ends, which would be my elbows. I'm trying to stretch that muscle. That knot is going to get tighter and tighter, just like the knot in the rope here in the gym. As the girls are climbing the rope, it's pulling that knot tighter and tighter and tighter. So what we actually want to do is we want to send a message to the brain that says, hey, that is way too tight. Let's relax that. Probably what's happened at this point is your, um, oh, is it, is it too, somebody, Carol says someone needs to mute on their side. I don't, see, I don't know. I'm just going to keep going. So if you if you don't have your mute on, go ahead and put your mute on because it sounds like it's difficult for someone to hear. Um, okay. So what happens is we want to release that muscle first so that we can get that muscle primed to work during your exercise and then stretch it out, okay? Or you can just release that muscle and stretch it. Probably, Jennifer, if you have piriformis syndrome, you wanna be releasing it and stretching it every day. And so what you're gonna do is take a, a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball, lay on the ground and really roll it into your cheek so you're laying face up on the ground and you're gonna find the spot. You're gonna know the spot right away. You're gonna be like, oh, like we wanna get off that ball, okay? So I want you to um, roll that, put the ball on the tender spot and let it just sit there and let your body just kind of melt right over the ball until you can feel it release. And I know, you know, sometimes you're like, well, how does that even feel? But you're going to feel it just stop being so tender. Okay. So roll your hips first before you start to exercise because we want to release that muscle then we want to stretch that muscle and then we want to activate the muscle, meaning using these priming exercises. I'm going to talk a little bit about those. I actually mentioned one of them a minute ago. That's that um, hip extension one. Let's see. Let me go back here to find this, this exercise here on the bottom. That's a good priming muscle for the glutes, but uh, we'll talk about that later. So always release first then stretch it, and then we need to get it activated. So when in that release where um, it, it's really tender, um, we want to make sure that we um, – I lost my Oh, yes. I'm sorry. The, I was reading a question. The point is when it's really tender and you roll that ball and it sends a message to the brain that says – hey, that's way too tight, let's release it. And that is when you start to feel the pain subside. Um, Jennifer, as far as exercising to avoid, I can't really prescribe a whole thing here on the, um, on the webinar because I want to keep going with the material, but I would say you don't want to continue to strengthen a muscle that is really super tight because it's already overactive. Um, well, in one sense, it's overactive, we need to release it, um, but it's inactive as in it's not functioning quite properly. So we want to create balance. And I'll talk about that in a little bit too. But the key is to create balance. Um, so the, that muscle externally rotates the leg. But I'm going to keep moving forward here because I want to get through all the material. Okay, so gluteus medius, and that's piriformis syndrome. Should, I'll add that in next time. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to, hopefully, the exercises. I don't know what the delay is here. Oh, there we go. Okay, gluteus medius, best exercises for gluteus medius. Now, um, the single leg squat. That is something that's difficult. So what I would do is work on a very small range of motion 
don't go all the way down, just practice this or sit down in a chair and practice sitting in a chair and then standing up from one leg. So any version of that single leg squat works the gluteus medius because it is stabilizing that pelvis from tipping. And then the side plank with hip abduction is awesome. You can also do a clamshell exercise. If you're looking at that lady on the bottom, you're like, oh, there's no way I can do that. Just lay down on the ground with your hip on the ground and raise that top leg up and down. You're going to feel that muscle working. And when you um, get you know, when you get strong enough to hold that side plank, then um, bump it up. So that side plank is actually really working a lot of gluteus medius and ab over here on this bottom leg as well as the top leg. So just progress to that. So start laying on the ground, raising the top leg, and then gradually start working on lifting your hips to make it more difficult. Okay, gluteus minimus, he lays underneath. Let's get through this nerdy stuff. Um, he lays underneath gluteus medius, excuse me, and he does internal rotation. So just what that means is he just rotates your toes inward, okay? Um, so if I'm standing straight forward and I rotate my toes inward from my hip, that's what gluteus minimus is. And this is a muscle that a lot of people forget to work because think of think about this. We don't typically move our toes inside on purpose, right? Um, so strong gluteus minimus, mus minimus muscles <laughs> help stabilize the hip and joint during walking and running. And so this can also, weakness in this muscle can then transfer all the way down the leg. So another thought for Jennifer's piriformis is a lot of times if you've got weak muscles in these glutes, the piriformis is probably taking over. Uh, not to get super detailed, but it, it's likely this might be your culprit. I'm guessing that maybe that's weak and the glute, uh, the piriformis is taking over um, trying to balance things out. So um, that we can do muscle testing on to see how that works out. So gluteus minimus, here it is, sideline leg, with, with leg lift with internal rotation. You see how this guy's got his foot pointed down? that is working gluteus minimus and not often do people train with that that leg turning in or internally rotated so write that one down that's your best bet for the gluteus minimus okay moving along the hip flexor this is the bonus muscle we're going to talk about this is probably the guy that's holding you back from getting the boot you want the booty you want most likely not always but in a lot of cases. So this is the picture of the front of the body, okay? This is your big leg bone. These is, this right here down here is where your quads would be. The psoas or the hip flexor muscle attaches to your upper leg bone. It comes up here and it dives down past your belly. It, this is all underneath and it's part of it. There's actually two muscles here. One is iliacus, it kind of lines the inside of that hip. Um, girdle and then the other one is the psoas who comes up here and notice where the psoas attaches one spine two spine three spine four spine five spine okay so it's attaching to your spine from the inside or the front portion of your body so this lifts the knee and brings the thigh towards the abdomen that's that's its function is to lift the knee so the problem we often have is that these hip flexors really tight from many of us sitting all day, they get tight, they get short, and they start to pull on the low back. Okay, remember we talked about the importance of balance. This is where this all comes in. If your hip flexors, let me see what my next slide is. Yeah, okay, another picture of the hip flexors. If your hip flexors are really tight, this could be inhibiting or shutting down your butt cheek muscles, okay? So we have muscles called antagonistic muscles, which are opposites. They're antagonists, okay? The hip flexors are antagonists. They do the opposite movement that the glutes do. If the glute takes my leg back behind me, my hip flexor lifts my knee up in front of me. Total opposite muscle. So it's important to not only strengthen the glutes, but what most people forget is they're working the glutes, working the glutes. They forget to release the tight antagonistic or opposite muscle group, which in the glutes case is this hip flexor. Um, raise your hand in the chat or give me a yes, I understand that. I, I don't want to be too confusing for you there, but that's a really important thing to understand is that we forget that we have other muscles. We just focus in on the butt, and I hope this is a big aha movement moment for you. We focus in on the butt, but we completely forget about what's going on around it. We need to look up and down and in front of the muscles that we're trying to work, okay? So the problem with this is that you see, uh, where I said here, it attaches to one, two, three, four, five 
of your low um, back muscles. Um, got it. Awesome. Got it. Um, let me see. Keep going. Chris and Alicia. Is Alicia here? Yay. Um, good to have you here. So this a lot of times will tug and short. I'm going to stand up and see if you guys can see me here because I really need to show you how this works. Okay. I, I'm hoping that you guys can see this in your screen here because I can't see me in the screen. If I'm sitting all day and I've got these hip flexors right here and right here, I'm turning to the side. If I sit all day, these hip flexors get short and you see what my butt just did? It stuck way out. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. Um, if, if this is happening, it's pulling on my low back. Okay. Also my butt cheeks just stretched out. There's nothing going on there. Everybody's sleeping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> poking my butt on a webinar. All right. So low back pain and tightness can be an indicator of tight hip flexors. I'm back. Okay. Um, so what we need to do, excuse me, in order to get your glutes to fire is we often need to release the hip flexors. And that is what people tend to forget is that we have muscles that are all around our glutes. You know, I think we're all culprit of it. We, um, oh, good, Carol. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, we, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to try that again. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. I'm going to tip it down. Tell me, hey, will you guys tell me when you can see my hips? All right. Can you see my hips now? I'm going to lower this down a little bit. Give me a quick, okay, perfect. Okay, this is, what, <laughs> sorry about that. The last thing I wanted to do to show off there is, okay, so I've got my hip flexors. I'm standing up nice and tall. Hip flexors are nice and stretched out. Okay, they attach here and they attach deep in there. Okay. Um, so when I'm sitting all day, I'm super short. These muscles are getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Watch my low back. It's now arching because I'm super short in those muscles. Okay. It's like tightening up suspenders. Now my low back is really tight. If I touch these muscles really tight, my glutes are all stretched out. They're, they're asleep. There's nothing going on. No activity. They're just stretched all day. Okay. What happens here now is then I have this tight, tight low back. When I come up from this, my hip flexors are like, uh, no thanks, we're short, we're fine. And now they're still tugging on my low back, causing a lot of pain. Okay. So, so if you have a lot of back pain or sometimes when we sleep and we sleep curled up and you stretch out and your back bothers you, it's your hip flexors. So keep that in mind that tight hip flexors can be inhibiting or shutting down the work that you're trying to do in your glutes. Okay. So when those muscles are released, the hip flexors are released, they allow the glutes to fire. Um, oops, I think I cut my slide off here. Um, and then we can actually get to work. Okay, so that is in my promo for this webinar. I was saying that's the one muscle that could be stopping you from getting the butt of your dreams. It's this hip flexor. This same rules apply, like I told Jennifer about um, rolling with the ball. You can do the same with the hip flexors. It is really hard to get the hip flexors with a ball. You can get, see my arrow here, you can get this portion, but this is all underneath your guts and your abs and all that. So in my belly booty boot burn boot camp, I have a special hip flexor releasing sequence. That's a video and a PDF that each person will go through before each workout because the, the key here is we want to release that muscle so that when we actually do all that work, our butts will actually receive the work because the hip flexor has now been like, oh, okay, I'm chill. You can go ahead and work the butt now. Otherwise, the hip flexor is overactive and taking, it's like a bully on the playground. It's taking all the fun. Okay. All right. So moving on. Let's see. I'm having it. There we go. Okay. Here's why weak glutes and tight hip flexors, we'll throw that into the mix, will take you down. They'll cause low back pain. Um, so the weak glutes can come as a result of those tight hip flexors, all right? They can cause knee pain. Remember I talked about the IT band that runs all the way down the side of your leg. Um, if your hips are really out of whack and tight or on one side or overactive and then weak on another, it can cause imbalance. And then that goes all the way down to that IT band and causing knee pain. Also, the quads come into play with that as well. Um, it can cause groin or hamstring pulls. Again, it's all about that balance. Tight muscles or weak muscles, other muscles will start to take over. So if my glutes are weak, unless I'm sprinting or I'm hiking or I'm doing some weird movement and my hamstrings are like, okay, well the glutes aren't helping. So I'm going to go ahead and do the work. And maybe it's too much of a load for those hamstrings by themselves. That's where we get groin or hamstring pulls. 
plantar fasciitis. You can actually, that's pain in the bottom of the foot. It's an inflammation on that tissue on the bottom of the foot. These things can travel all the way down because the fascia or the covering of your muscle is all connected. Okay. So it travels this covering um, of the connective tissue, the, the glutes, that tissue connects to the hamstring tissue, which connects to the calf tissue, which then connects to the plantar fasciitis, the plantar fascias, the tissue on the bottom of your foot. Um, you can have tight hip flexors, of course. Frequent ankle sprains, kind of because of that whole connection I just described. Um, decreased power, because as I explained earlier, you get a lot of power from the glutes. It is a very powerful muscle. So when we're, you know, if performance is your is your game, then you're probably and your glutes aren't really focused and strong and activated, you're probably not getting a lot of power. A weak glutes can cause hip instability. We talked about the SI joint earlier. Um, your pants might be falling down. <laughs> now let me back up. That hip instability can be because um, maybe one side is weaker and it's causing a tilt in that hip, or it can cause a tilt this way. And then you have to think about, oh, there's something going up in my back now. The, the upper back muscle on that side is probably tight, or my abs are weak. So here's another thing that can happen. My abs are weak, causing a pelvic tilt in the other direction. They're stretched out. They're not pulling down. All right. This can actually travel to your lats and your shoulders. So there's a lot of stuff all connected here. Um, and again, pants falling down, that's a real big problem. So, <laughs> okay, let's see. Do you have sleepy butt syndrome? We kind of, I just dabbled in that a minute ago. So are you sitting all day or a lot? This turns off the glute muscles because as I showed you, as I stood up there, it stretches out the glute muscles. They, they don't have any need to fire while I'm just sitting here all day. So if you're somebody that sits all day, that's a problem. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you are up and about that your butt's not asleep. It, if you are um, not actively firing your glutes, your, butt's, your butt can be asleep. You could be walking all day long, but if your glutes aren't awake and fired and primed, which I'll talk about in a minute. But typically, especially in women, the quads tend to be overdeveloped. Um, and the hamstrings are underdeveloped and um, you this is because we have a wider hip angle It causes us to overuse the quads. We call it being quad dominant Okay, so this might cause you to never feel the soreness or activation in the glutes So if you're somebody that squats a lot or lunges a lot and you're like I never feel it in my glutes There's things we can do to reposition your body number one so that you can feel it in your glutes We push you back into your heels a little bit if that doesn't work um, then I just take squats and lunges out of the mix altogether until we teach your butt to fire because um, there's no point in doing squats and lunges if your butt's not, it's, if, you know, building a butt is your goal, if it's not firing, you could do this all day and you're just going to build stronger and stronger quads and be further and further out of balance. So, so far, I want to take a little pause and see in the comments, tell me anybody have an aha yet? Um, I want to know if you've received any sort of aha moment about any of the stuff we did, the SI joint, the piriformis, the imbalance, maybe, maybe something's come to mind for you that you're like, oh, I might be out of whack here, or is that why I never feel anything in my butt? So I want to know, is this like, are you getting this, you know, or is there something, at least one thing I want you to walk away with where you're like, yeah, that's that's an area I could improve or start digging into. Of course, we can't dig into all the issues in this webinar, but it at least will at least give you a direction to go to be like, I need to look in that direction for my solution. Okay, so what I mean by um, not feeling the soreness is, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean soreness that day, but you're not feeling much glute activity um, in your glute exercises. So here are some things, I'm gonna help you with that too, um, but here are some things that can also, in addition, be holding you back from your dream butt. There's a butt, I had to get a couple butt pictures in here. Okay, I'm gonna rattle these out. One is the eat less, exercise more approach. We're gonna dig into these a little bit further. So there's the long cardio. You could be producing cortisol, which is a stress fat storage hormone. Random Pinterest workouts could be your problem. Love Pinterest, but we'll get into that. Tight hip flexors, we kind of already delved into that. Are you sitting all day? You could have sleepy butt syndrome. Okay, so most of us could probably pick one of those. Um, oh, let me see here. Oh yeah, just went through your back surgery. Front muscles, okay, Jennifer, good. Front muscles affecting my bum. Good. Yes. Oh, I love it, you guys. I love it. Um, a lot. Okay. A lot of ahas because you just went through back surgery. Yes. 
Uh, and maybe some of that could have been because of wheat butt. I'm not sure. Balance makes a ton of sense. Balance from side, oh yeah, from side to side, front to back. Um, and the hip flexor is why I have trouble lifting money. Oh, okay, so Jennifer, for you, interesting. So that could be two things. This might get a little confusing, but that lifting your knee could be that your whip, hip flexor is really weak, but I'm guessing it's more like it's too tight and somewhat inactive, like it's, it's uh, over firing, okay? Which I know that can be a really confusing concept, but a tight muscle is not necessarily a strong muscle. A tight muscle can be a weak, inactive muscle. I'm guessing that's what it is because in most cases that is. I've, I've met very few people who have weak hip flexors because we use them so much in our life and because we, a lot of us tend to have weak butts. And then our hip flexor takes over. Okay. Okay. That makes me happy. You guys, you just made my day. Just knowing that you're putting pieces together. Like that's all you get. That just oh, makes me happy. Okay. Moving on. I'm just, I'm just a nerd about some of these things. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I, there we go. Um, so let's dig. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but this is a problem for people. And because this kind of dives into the dieting. So um, eat less, exercise more. Anytime but if somebody says, my butt is fat, I need to lose fat. Yes, that is a huge piece of shit. Like, there I go using that word huge again. Sorry. <laughs> um, shaping a butt. Yes, we have to get fat off the butt to actually see the muscle underneath, right? It's the same thing with your abs. We could, we could have the same conversation about your abs. Um, is we've got to get the fat off. But the problem is so many people say, okay, the, and remember I told you in the very beginning when I went to college years ago, a lot of years ago, um, the science was completely different than it is now. We have done so much more study on hormones. It used to be all about calories in versus calories out. And that is part of the equation. But the food that we eat makes a big difference in what hormones our body creates at the time that we eat that food and in the next few hours. And those hormones will determine whether we store fat or burn fat. And our whole goal with shedding fat all over, including our butt, should be to teach our body to be a fat burner rather than a sugar burner. And that, again, is a whole other um, webinar. I am, as part of the Booty Belly Burn Boot Camp, running a metabolism webinar within that program because we're going to talk about – I don't like to talk a lot about certain types of metabolism boosters because – I feel there needs to be a strong foundation of good nutrition first, and I don't want to put that information out there unless I know that somebody is going to have good um, foundation of good nutrition. And so I know that in my program, I'm going to get you that good foundation of nutrition, and then I feel comfortable teaching you about the supplements and the different things that will rev up your metabolism. But suffice it to say, that your body will go into defensive mode and actually retain more fat to protect itself if you create too big of a calorie deficit. Quickly on the eat less, exercise more, um, what happens here is you're asking your automobile, your car, to do more um, work with less gas. Or you're asking your employee to show up and work for free on her day off or, you know, things like that. You're asking your body to do more with less food and that is never going to work out. Your car is going to shut down, your employee is going to quit and your body's going to be like, no, thank you. I'm just going to slow down my metabolism here because you're pushing me way too hard. Calorie deficit is good, but too much is bad. We want to reduce calories, maybe 200, 300 calories a day and go at it gradually. And also this eat less, exercise more. Um, can turn into compensatory eating where you're, you're trying really good and you're being really good all day and then you get to the evening and you're just like, get in my belly now. I have a lot of people that are nighttime snackers and it's because they a lot of times don't eat enough in the day and now by nighttime they're just like shoving it in and there's no reasoning happening at that point because at that point, the, what we call the reptilian part of your brain here comes the nerd part, um, takes over and it's taking over the reasoning part because the reptilian survival part of your brain is like, no, I don't even care what your diet says you need to do. I just want to get the food in because you have just asked me to do a whole bunch of stuff and you're not feeding me and it's all about me surviving. So I'm shutting down the frontal lobe that used to reason for you and I'm taking over and now you're eating popcorn and oranges and crackers and chocolate and all kinds of things. Okay. Um, so you begin to also lose muscle when you eat less and exercise more. So the body literally begins to feed off its muscle for energy because of what it just explained. Um, so when we're talking about muscle loss and we're trying to create a pretty booty or strong booty, 
form and function. Um, that's not helping us out to eat less, exercise more. So when it comes to your nutrition plan, whole real food, don't decrease calories too much. Every group I belong to on Facebook that's a weight loss group, I like to belong to these groups and learn from people and what are, what are people's mindsets about it so that I can help people in webinars like this. Um, people are down to like 1,200 calories. It's not enough. It's too much restriction. Um, I can't give a calorie amount because everybody's different. In my programs, I give um, a breakdown for how to figure out the right calories for you. So it's not just, here, eat this food. I give meal plans and complete meal plans and templates uh, that we use as templates. And then I give you the tool to calculate how many calories you actually need. Okay. So I don't know why my little clicker is just it's being funny here. Okay, there we go. Long cardio. Let's talk about cardio real quick here. So cardio, especially long distance running, doesn't actually firm or tighten your booty. And that used to be in the day. It was like, oh, I'll just do more calorie or cardio because I'm going to burn more calories and then I'm going to lose the weight. But it kind of goes back to that a mentality. I've just told you about the eat less, exercise more. You can only get so far with that. Um, in fact, long cardio actually does the opposite. So just like extreme dieting, um, a long distance running, like really long, you know, 45 minutes to an hour every day will cause muscle loss. And the reason is because a couple of different hormones, the long steady state cardio doesn't produce enough muscular stimulus, like a burn in the muscle, um, like you might get when you lift weights or you do high intensity interval training. Um, it doesn't create that burn stimulus. If it did, we wouldn't be able to do it for a long period of time, right? We'd be like, oh, I'm burning. I got to stop, which is the beauty of HIIT workout or that's the makeup of HIIT workouts. So long distance cardio doesn't create the right hormones um, to burn fat and build muscle. Those two hormones are called human growth hormone and testosterone. We'll dive into those in my metabolism webinar in the, the boot camp. Um, but, um, but then what happens is it also can produce a stress hormone called cortisol, which is a fat storage hormone. We got enough of that going on these days, enough stress. And then we add these long workouts to it and we're giving more stress, especially if you're a menopausal woman, the long cardio is not your friend. And when I say long cardio, walking long distance is amazing for fat burning. Um, it's amazing for menopausal women. Uh, it's the long cardio where you and your friend are jogging along and you could kind of do this all day. You're chit chatting with each other a little bit. You know, you're breathing in there, but you're, you're talking along the way as well. Okay, so that's called steady state cardio or long, low intensity, slow um, distance cardio. So that's, that's what that is. That's when you go to the gym and you do that cardio machine and you're listening to your podcast or watching a show and you're just going for it, sweating and huffing and puffing. You burn quite a few calories during the workout, but you don't burn a lot of calories post-workout and you are creating that potential cortisol situation that causes fat storage. Now that cortisol tends to store itself in the belly, but most of us here probably, if we're here for our butts, we're probably here for our bellies too, right? So, um, so you, your another one is that you take a, a stab at random workouts and we kind of just went over all of that. So, um, the, the reason you need a well-defined workout is because you want to make sure you release those hip flexors. You want to make sure if that's your problem, could be something else. Um, you want to make sure that you, so release the tight muscles that are taking over. You want to make sure that you are targeting all three areas of the glutes, not just these random exercises. So squats and lunge challenges. Now I love Pinterest. I'm just, I use Pinterest as an example, but you see these on Facebook, these 30 day squat and lunge challenges, which would be awesome if your butt was firing. Okay. I hope you just went, Oh, I hope you just did that because you could very possibly be overdoing these squats and lunges and overloading your quads and your quads are like, yeah, so happy to get a great workout, but your butt's like still snoring in the background. Okay. So that is my only pet peeve about those challenges is they're put out there for the world. But from a trainer perspective, it's like, Oh, but not everybody should be doing that. Okay, so you've got to make sure your glutes are firing properly by priming them before you work out. Also, this is another thing. When you take a stab at random workouts, it, they're great. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I think especially for, like if, if, if you were not going to work out at all and you're like, okay, I'll just pick a random workout and I'll just do that. That's awesome because you're going to burn calories. It's great for your mindset. So I'm not 
totally knocking those. But if you have a goal and you've got this progress you want to make, you have got to make sure that your workouts are progressive. And that we call this in the training business, progressive overload. They're not just random slap together workouts. We design, hopefully, if you have a good trainer, we design workouts to overload the muscle progressively. So um, we challenge it in, in a different way or with more weight or with different amount of reps. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can tweak to progressively overload your muscle. The frequency with which we train, the intensity with which we train, and the time that we train those muscles. That's how the three keys that we use to overload the muscle. So this would change from week to week and exercise to exercise should change and target all areas of the glutes, okay? So you see that bottom target, that bottom bullet there is really like how a personal trainer looks at a program and says, okay, this is good. This is complete. We have all the pieces here, okay? And that's the thing with the Pinterest workouts. Here's a good example that I've been using lately. I saw this one Pinterest workout for abs. And it was cool because it was a seated workout. Um, and a lot of people need to be, they could be doing this from their chair at work and all that stuff. But there was a grid of nine exercises and the girl was doing them from her chair. And a lot of them were great. But the problem was of the nine exercises in this little grid, there were little videos, maybe you've seen it. Um, six of the exercises overworked the hip flexor. Okay, so if this Sorry, I try not to judge, but if this workout is designed for somebody that's sitting all day, hey, you can do this in your chair. I'm already sitting all day. My hip flexors are already super short, and you just gave me six exercises to tighten those hip flexors up even more. Hopefully, give me an aha in the chat box if that just went, oh. Okay, so that is why you do want to be really careful about the Pinterest random workouts or whatever, not just Pinterest, but the ones you see, okay? I'm checking the chat box right now. Aha, uh -huh. do I have some ahas? Uh Come on, ladies and gentlemen, give me an aha uh -huh for that. <laughs> That's pretty important. So, as I said, the nine out of the nine exercises, six of them overworked the hip flexors. Somebody that already is over firing their hip flexors, not firing their glutes, is going to have even more problems. And maybe, maybe their abs are already at over activated because they're staying in this crunched position all day, too. Okay, just a thought. Okay, so I'm sorry, I don't mean to judge, but oh, oh sometimes. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know why my slides are taking forever. Okay, let's talk real quick about quad dominance again. I've talked about the quads over, over using the quads when our butt's not firing. Uh, so most women have an easier time building muscle on the front of their legs, um, and that is because our hips are wider. It's called a Q angle, the angle from our hips to our knees, um, and our quads begin to take over. I'm a good example of this. I have to work really hard to get my hamstrings and my glutes to fire by doing the right exercise sequence before I train. Um, so when this happens, your quads take over a majority of the work when you're exercising. They'll get larger, and then that also causes the back of the butt or the backside, the legs and the butt on the back, to develop much more slowly. So that could be your problem too. Take a look at your quad muscles. Are you super tight in your quads? They're probably dominant. Okay, again, I'm just kind of generalizing because I can't see you and I haven't touched your muscles and all that. Okay, so let's talk about how to do it right. I just totally nagged on how you're doing it wrong or the world is doing it wrong. Let's talk about how to do it right. In my Booty Belly Bird Boot Camp, I use um, this Prime Activate Pump technique that I'm going to tell you about now. I use it because it works great for abs and it works great for glutes, and that's going to be our focus, is increasing our metabolism and um, really working the glutes properly and the abs. Okay, so again, like I said, we could have the same webinar on abs pretty much with a couple different things, but here it is. To do it right, we need a proper warm-up. So we need to prime all three major muscles of the butt that we just learned about a moment ago. And that basically means, I've used the term prime with you throughout the webinar, um, we, means we need to wake up your glutes for the workout. I'm gonna plug myself in here in case I run out of battery, that'd be sad. Um, so we need to wake the glutes up for the workout. So um, we gotta wake up that sleepy butt, okay? And again, not, uh, People that have sleepy butts aren't just the people that sit all day. It's, it could be anybody that just tends to not fire their glutes properly, maybe because their quads are doing the work, okay, or their hip flexors, okay? So wake them up. We need to get the joints and the ligaments warmed up. And so I have like a, I have a special um, hip flexor release workout 
specifically for certain people that know they're tight in their hip flexors and quads that these girls, these women will start with in the, in the boot camp. They'll start with that. Then they'll go to prime. It's kind of worked into the whole workout. We prime the glutes with specific exercises to wake them up. So we want to get a good burn in the glute before we start to activate them. And the activate section is where you're going to spend the majority of your time in your workout. That's your lunges and your squats and your hip thrusts and your hip bridges and your donkey kicks and all the exercises that we do for glutes, right? So that's the bulk of your workout. That's where we're spending um, the majority of our time activating all three angles of the glutes, okay? Which is important. Again, remember, making sure that you include all three angles. And I do them in a specific order when I train. Um, each glute muscle has to be individually engaged to force it to fire. So we don't want necessarily, I mean, we do throw exercises in there that fire them all somewhat, but we want to make sure we're really spending time with each muscle, like it's one of your children. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we have the pump aspect. So the prime activate pump technique, the last part I do, and I, I put the pump piece into various parts into the activate segment as well. And basically this is ISO, I have ISO written here. That means isometric holds. Um, that means where you like squat hold, for example, um, to get you know um, blood flow to the area and it creates fuller, firmer, rounder glutes. And it ignites your metabolic boost. So you get a really big afterburn effect. An afterburn effect is um, the ability of your uh, workout to increase your metabolism so that you are burning calories long after the workout. So remember how I talked about um, cardio, long cardio, you burn a lot of calories during the workout. During high intensity interval training, I'll talk about in just a second, that um, increases your metabolism well after the workout for like 24 hours. Okay. So the pump portion of my programs or this outline I'm giving you um, helps to increase the afterburn effect. So we have the prime. Well, first of all, we have the release, the hip flexor release. Then we have the prime. This is where you're waking up your butt muscles. One of those exercises would be that one I showed you early on um, where she, the little drawn lady was laying on the ground and she was lifting her legs up. That's a great priming muscle. Hip bridges are another great priming exercise, I mean. And then we um, activate, which we do all the exercises for all the angles, and then we pump. We put in these pump movements, isometric holds and pulses and things throughout to get the blood flow there. The reason for getting the blood flow there is that we get that oxygen, um, we build muscle when we have more blood flow, we get nutrients in there for the body to build the muscle. It also creates more blood in the area for better recovery, okay? So there you go. You want the prime, you want to activate, and you want to pump the muscle. All right, so how to build that booty. Let's, let's get on with the activities here. All right, so we need to shed the fat over the booty. And we didn't talk a lot about fat burn in this, but HIIT training is your number one go-to for shedding fat and building power, okay? That's high-intensity interval training. That's where you do short bursts. Well, I'm just going to use sprinting as an example. You don't have to sprint. It could be any exercise that really challenges your heart rate. Um, it could be mountain climbers, burpees, squat jumps, anything like that. Um, so HIIT training to shed the fat a couple times a week. Probably, if you're a beginner, two times a week on non-consecutive days, not two days in a row. Maybe if you're a little more advanced, you can go to three, even four days a week of HIIT training. This all is going to depend on your fitness level now. Um, also, it can look like a lot of things. It could look like 20-second sprints with a two-minute recovery. They've done actually really in-depth studies. I know it sounds like two minutes. That's a lot of time, but they have done a lot of studies showing just a 20 second sprint with a full two minute, even four minute recovery doing several rounds of that, like eight or 10 rounds has huge benefits to your metabolism. Um, the key with HIIT training is it has to be all out. It can be short, fast, but it has got to be a little bit furious because you've got to stimulate the right hormones that I talked about when we talked about that long cardio. We've got that human growth hormone and testosterone. You should be going to that point of like huffing, puffing, burning in the muscle, and then you know you've stimulated the right hormone. Okay. We want to target all three glute muscles using the rule. I didn't really explain the rule of thirds, but I have kind of been explaining it the whole time. Um, one thing that I use the rule of thirds is working the glutes all three muscles, right? So there's three. Working them in three different angles. Um, so three different planes, horizontal plane, 
um, vertical plane and then a rotational plane. That's kind of in depth, but as a trainer mind, we I use the rule of thirds when creating a program. Um, and then there's the three different ways. There's lots of reps. There's with lightweight. There's heavy reps with. Um, that explain that. I'm oh, sorry. There's heavy weight with low reps. There's lightweight with lots of reps, and then there's the pumping um, motions that I talked about in the Prime Activate Pump slide. All right, you should target the glutes two to three times a week, especially if this is your trouble area. Um, not really going to dive into stubborn fat in detail, but let me just tell you that if uh, we're going to go over that in my metabolism webinar in the boot camp, but just for the time's sake, there is two kinds of fat there's stubborn fat, and then there's fat that's a little, I mean, is there any great kind of fat? But there's stubborn fat, and then there's fat that's more receptive to change, okay? Um, if your glutes, your hips, your thighs, or your stubborn area, you're going to want to target that more frequently than other areas of the body, okay? So I have to target three times a week to keep it up. I totally notice if I start slipping and I'm not targeting my lower body three times a week, the right areas in the right way, I start to notice a slide off. So um, think about that. Start writing that into your plan. Prime the glutes before your workout with specific exercises to wake up the sleepy bum. I kind of hit that a lot of times. Priming the glutes, waking up the butt so that you get the glutes actually working during your workout, okay? Don't train too often. That's another key thing is that you've got to give those glutes. You, you don't want to train the glutes every single day. You've got to give them time to recover, okay? So, you know, maybe three days a week you're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or even something like Monday, Thursday, Saturday, you know, put a two-day recovery in there or something like that, okay? Um, what else? Oh, bonus workouts. Yeah. Okay. So in the chat, the very first thing in the chat, I'm going to check the chat to see if we have any questions. Um, the very first comment in the chat, um, um, oh, Astro's here. I gave you extra workouts. Okay. Um, let's see, Jennifer, I think I have too many injuries to join a group, but would like to, okay, great, Jennifer. I will definitely do that. Um, awesome. So you may be surprised. We'll see. Usually when I do when it comes to personal or people wanting to get into groups is I have them schedule one private session first. Unless I know them, I've worked with them before, I know how they move, they're injury free, I can usually throw them right into a group. But um, if I don't know you or your body at all, I require a private session so I can see how it's all going to go down and see if I have a gal tonight that she's actually doing a semi-private session in a group session so that we can gradually work her into the groups um, because that's what she wants to be but she's got a lot of injuries too and so I create a special program for her and she comes to the group and does it there so we can kind of watch her progress and she can see when she's ready for the group so that works out too so I will definitely do that Jen okay so what else do we have? Oh, yeah, that's it. Let me see. Did I get it all? Yeah. Bonus workouts in the chat. I gave you a little file. It's saved in Dropbox that you can download. Um, there's some ab workouts, some uh, hit workouts, and some booty workouts for you to play with. So that was my little reward for you guys that came live to the webinar. And now I want to tell you how you can build that booty with me. All right. So I've been talking to you throughout the webinar about the booty belly burn <laughs> <laughs> cannot not laugh every time I say that because it's just funny. Um, so we're going to tell our summer wardrobes that we'll be right back in this boot camp. So the boot camp starts May 7th. It runs through June 8th. It's five weeks. That looks like four when you look at it on paper, but it's really five weeks. Um, and the reason I'm cutting it down on June 8th is because a lot of moms now have kids home. So we will probably continue those workouts here in the studio. Um, beyond June 8th, but that's the duration of the program. And if you decide to join the program, then you can carry on beyond that. But that's our focus. Hey, check this out. So, so many, I, as I built this, I just kept going and going and going. So this program has a ton of extra stuff in it. Um, we have because I loved this. This was really fun to create. <laughs> oh, it's kind of scary sometimes what a nerd I am. Okay, so this is your effective glute and ab plan. Now today we talked all about glutes, but as I said before, we can apply a lot of these same principles to your abdominals. Your abs have three muscles also, ironically. I never really put that together, but we have your six packs. We have your rotation muscles called your obliques, and then we have your uh, transverse abdominus, which is a deeper ab muscle. Um, and so we do the same principles applying working the abs in all three directions, the same thing. So 
In the Booty Belly Burn Boot Camp, you'll get effective loop workouts using the Prime Activate Pump technique I talked about. We'll increase metabolism using HIIT training and compound exercises for a huge, compound exercises, let me explain that. On full body workouts, when you combine lower and upper body together, you get a big metabolic boost. It's a great use of time for your exercise time um, because you're asking the heart to blood, pump blood to the lower body then to the upper body. Um, and it's your heart's like, oh, I'm going down here. Oh, I'm going up here. So you get a lot of calorie burn and a big metabolic boost while you're training all the zones. The other thing is if I go, let's say a squat and then I stand up and I go to a press, I'm asking my core to come in and help me change direction. So it's a super effective way to work out. One of my favorite ways those kinds of workouts are in the program. So if you join the, I've got a lot more details for you about the program here, but if you join here at the gym, if you're a local and you join at the gym, you get access to everything that the ladies online get as well. So they're getting five days of workouts a week. I have a special web page that I created with the videos. And so they'll go there each week. So if you're training in the gym for this, you also get access to the website workouts that the online gals are getting so that you can maybe you're signing up for two or three days a week here at the gym you have all those workouts that you can do at home um, and then we'll work them into what we're doing in the gym i'll show you how to do that um, so we're going to train our glutes and abs the smart way we have specific exercise sequences to release the hip flexors that i talked about before um, if that is you're that person that's like i think this is happening for me i have a special sequence i created it's a pdf and a video so that you can make sure that you're releasing those hip flexors. Now that's something that could take time. You know, you want to do this before your workouts, but you also want to continue doing that program to make sure your hip flexors, it's just something you need to work into your regular routine. Um, we're going to prime the glutes and the abs because I see this quite often is that people just, they aren't connecting with their abs. So when they're doing these crunches, they're not even really getting the core muscles to fire. So one of our first sessions here at the gym is where, and I have a video on the website for the online gals is a special section on core activation. It's kind of like a course, this program, um, because I've got lots of bonus videos in there to help teach you how to activate the core and how to kind of test that out. Okay. Um, so we're going to make sure that you're firing the right muscles so that you're actually doing them during the workout. Um, and I love creating workouts. So I had a blast creating this whole program. I like to, when I do programs like this, I like to create them well in advance. So we know exactly what you're doing. You're also getting four weeks of done for you meal plans, because as I talked before, when it comes to burning fat, it is essential that you first, my philosophy is no supplements are going to work for you. Or if you're eating crap food, sorry, I said the crap word, but, um, we've got to get your food dialed in first. And then in the metabolism webinar, I forgot to uh, mentioned that on this, so I've been telling you, but in the metabolism webinar that comes with this program, we'll do it in about week two. Um, I'll talk about some supplements that will increase your fat burn, but I really am a stickler on making sure you understand eating real food makes a difference first. So you get a recipe guide, four weeks of done for you meal plans, which I've mentioned earlier, they're templates. I also will give you a tool to help you measure how many calories you should be taking in for you because I can't prescribe one meal plan for every person that joins the program because everybody's needs are a little different. So I'm going to give you a way to calculate that. Why? You know what? I had cute little pictures in here. There they are. Look it. <laughs> Where's the other one? Let's see. Oh, look it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, these slides are so plain. All right, so you're going to be getting the Belly Booty Burn Boot Camp done for you meal plans. There's also shopping lists because my ladies in my other programs have loved the shopping list. They like need the shopping list. There's also a prep guide for each week's meal plan, how to get prepped that week so that you're successful throughout the week. So each week's meal plan has the plan. It has the shopping list and the prep guide. Um, you're also going to get my smart carb cycling and intermittent fasting guide. So how this is going to go down is it's a five week program. We're going to do four weeks of the meal plans. And in week four, I'm going to start teaching you about carb cycling and intermittent fasting. And I have a guide for you to download that croissant is killing me right now. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to talk about it in about week four, maybe week three. I'm going to see how everybody's doing. That's the coaching part. Um, see how everyone's doing. And then I'm going to teach you how to incorporate carb cycling and intermittent fasting. Now that you have your clean eating down, you can incorporate some of these other techniques that really accelerate your fat loss. 
the thing is people want to try these programs and they're eating crummy, but I cannot let myself do that to you. So I want to teach you to eat well first and then try these um, protocols. All right. You also, as a bonus, look at it really well. And then I break down for you how I would prep that meal plan, just like I did in the four week meal plans, but this is just another guide kind of helps with some cooking techniques and different things. Um, and then you get the booty ab playbook. This is something I kept, I just came up with recently as I was making the program. So I was like, I need to put all my best booty tips that I'm going to teach the ladies here in the gym because, you know, conversation comes up and we talk and we teach. Um, and I'm going to put all those in this little playbook. So you get the booty and ab playbook as well with the best techniques in there. There's some fun little secret techniques. So that's what you get. They release your hip flexors as well, that protocol. Um, you get the workout videos. Those are for both. I, I made an error here. That's for online people and um, studio people. Um, so that means if you're online and you want to participate in the program, you'll be uh, given a password to my password protected web page. You'll get the password. There's a welcome page there that gives you all the downloadable guides. And then there is um, a uh, tons of little tutorials and things like that. And then there's workout videos for each week. You have the release video, you have the prime uh, video, then you have the, the working video, you have a full body workout each week, you have two glute workouts each week, and a core workout and two hit workouts each week. The, the core and the hit sometimes coincide on the same day. So it's five days of workouts for those of you that are ready for five days. You don't have to do five days, but those of you that are ready, I wanted to make sure you had stuff to do. If you're here in Sandpoint, you can do two or three studio sessions per week. You could do private sessions, you could do semi-private sessions. Plus, you get the online videos for home workouts. One thing I forgot to mention is that these workouts, the first week of the workouts, will have no equipment at all because we need to get your tendons, ligaments, and muscles ready to go. Um, your, uh, beyond that, we're going to be using a lot of band work. So I have linked for you in the welcome email and on the webpage the particular bands I use. That way you can get your hands on the bands in the first week and be ready for week two. Bands are a really inexpensive tool and work awesome for the glutes because there's a lot of things you can do with those. So I don't know what this slide's all about. <laughs> oh, this, you get to work, <laughs> oh, operator error. You get to work with ladies like these. Look at these ladies. So I wanna make, okay, so what's happening here is this is Lisa, she got engaged, and so we had a little FOMOSA party for Lisa. That's her, that's, she doesn't always wear a boa to her workout and a tiara, but this particular day, she did um, because we wanted to help her celebrate. This is Marcy, who is 69 years old. Do you know Marcy can hold a plank for three minutes and 21 seconds? Probably longer now. That was a few months ago. She also hangs from a bar. Today she did pull-ups, assisted pull-ups with a band. She is the most. She's probably my oldest client right now. So inspirational. Like all the other gals. Like look at these gals over here on the right. These gals. Let's see. I think we've got we're we're running in 30s and 50s here in that picture. I won't I won't say all their ages, but these girls sent me this picture when I was out of town, and I left a workout for them to do. Look at their cute faces. They came here and worked out together on their own when I was out of town. I left workouts for them to do, and they rocked it. I was so happy to see that picture. So. These are some of the ladies that work out here at Misty Ballison Fitness. So lots of age ranges, lots of lifestyles, um, and lots of inspiration. And uh, the one thing I love the most about the studio is that you can be conditioning your hair here. You, your socks don't, let's see if any of socks don't match in these pictures. You don't have to match your socks. You can wear a boa. You can, it's very private so that uh, we can do whatever we want. I love it. So we have some really awesome ladies here, so inspiring and motivating. And I love that they would come together when I'm not here to, for that accountability to come and get their workout in. Um, so there's still more. You also get a private Facebook group to ask your questions and stay motivated because accountability is Huge. And so each week I check in, I check the sweaty selfies. We do sweaty selfie posts. Uh, people are going to share their different recipes that they found that fit into the program. I also have a Pinterest page that's uh, approved, recipes that are approved in case you want to digress. Now, when it comes to the meal plans, I also have food lists for you because there's basically there's three ways to eat here. There's the meal plan, there's the carb cycling and intermittent fasting protocols, and then there are food lists for people that 
just can't eat according to a meal plan because their lifestyle. So you have lists of food to choose from, and then I have a blank meal plan uh, meal plan template for you to fill in with those. Because I, I feel it's so important for us to plan. And so if you have a tool to plan on, you will be more likely to use it. When we plan, we do so much better. So much better. Um, so the Facebook group is where it all goes down. Um, there's the website where you'll get your information, but the Facebook group is where the camaraderie and the support and the questions. Each week I have a Q&A. I'll do a live stream. That's where I'm going to be doing the metabolism webinar is in that Facebook group um, and the Q&A live stream so that I can make sure I answer all your questions fully. Um, that's my favorite part because I love the coaching part. And I love to see the progress. So here's what people are saying. Ooh, this, this is a long one. Here's what people are saying about the studio. So Jenny says, it's obvious that the gym, your business is your passion. And that just makes me happy because it really is my passion. I'm a nerd about it. Sometimes I cry about my business. <laughs> the positive energy that you bring is palpable. And it seems that you truly enjoy the realm of she's really good with words, of lifestyle and fitness. The overall approach is lighthearted, but definitely goal-oriented. I've enjoyed several things at the studio. It is fast-paced. There are lots of good variations in the workouts. There's availability for group sessions and private sessions. And you have been sensitive to my goals. She had a specific goal. Um, she just finished a 13-mile run, too, which is really cool. This has meant throwing in specific exercises that help me with upper body strength and or substituting exercises as needed, which I can do in groups for modifications for people. If it becomes where I'm designing a whole new workout, then we talk about doing a semi-private or private session. But in most cases, we modify um, if necessary, if you've got a shoulder issue or knee issue or back issue. Um, as a goal and time-oriented person, I love how she worded that. I really appreciate this in a trainer studio environment. The gym is also clean, the equipment well-maintained, and the flow is smooth. Thanks for having me as a client. Um, Molly, little Molly, energy, effective and fun. I love female centered. I chose some of these because these um, reviews really kind of encompass what we do here at the studio. Missy, your energy is contagious. Your knowledge is informing. Your passion for what you share is uh, with us is appreciated. So I try to share tips throughout each session. Kind of depends on the day, but I try to answer questions that people have asked or texts that they sent with questions or just a topic that came up that applies to the girls in the studio. So there's always a teaching topic. Also, I love the workout change up. I love how I feel after every session accomplished. She looks that way and she leaves too. She looks like she's ready to go take on the world. This is a new one from Annie. That's her dog. That's not a picture of Annie. <laughs> her dog's real cute though. So I love this because Annie's 52 and I've had this rush of 52 year old women or women in their fifties that are really struggling with motivation they used to be fit and active, and they're just having a really hard time staying motivated and wanting to get their workouts in. They know it's so important, and they're starting to feel aches and pains, but um, they are struggling with that. And so I love this review. So Annie's 52, no real exercise for the last six or seven years except recreational hiking and walks. About three and a half months with Missy. She just started last, when did she start? Oh, she started in January with my Hello Gorgeous plan. She's lost 15 pounds. Let me tell you, that plan had a meal plan. She stuck to the meal plan and that made a huge difference. Um, most of the people that do my meal plans, that was a six week program and most people will lose between 10 and 15 pounds in that six weeks. But having a meal plan makes a huge difference. Um, I have no more back and neck pain. That is huge because that opens up this whole realm of things you can do when you stop functioning in pain, right? So now her workouts can be more effective. She can lift a 40 to 50 pound bags of animal food, lift heavy furniture, run four miles, eat better, sleep better, huge difference. Love the workouts, love the variety. She's doing the Spartan race. She's never done anything like it. We're doing a Spartan race this coming weekend. So, so that is, let's see if I have any special, oh, no, I thought I had a special fun picture coming on that. So if you are interested in the boot camp, go to bit.ly slash, I'll put it in the comments here so you can get a clickable link. Um, oh, Astro, thank you for your five minutes of support. I'm going to type that in bit.ly. I can't type and talk at the same time because, well, it just doesn't really work out. Slash MBF boot camp. There you go. Did I do it? Yep. Okay. There's a link for you. Mm, doesn't look like it linked. So we'll see. So you want to go to bit.ly slash MBF bootcamp. You can reach out to me in an email because you got 2 million emails about this <laughs> webinar. Um, and what you'll do is you'll go to the website. Um, if you're joining online, it's $129 to join online for the five weeks and all of that stuff that you got. So the meal plans, 
the metabolism webinar, the weekly workouts, the glute and ab playbook, the meal plan prep book, the hip flexor video and release PDF, um, the Facebook group, <laughs> all the things, all the guys, oh, the carb cycling intermittent fasting protocol playbook, as well as what I'm going to teach you in the group. So that is the $129 is for the online people. If you are a local at the studio, two times a week is $200 for the program. Go to the website though, because I may have, and then three times a week is more. I can't remember. I'm sorry about that. I think it's $275 for three times a week. And that includes all of those guides, the workouts here at the gym, and the, um, the, um, what was I just going to say? the workouts, the extra workouts for home. Okay. So if you go there, go to the website, you can reach out. You're going to fill out an application. If you're a studio participant, if you're online, just join, you can just join right in. Um, the sooner you join, I have the web page or the Facebook group already set up. The sooner you join, the more coaching you'll get. So if you join today, I'll add you to the Facebook group and we'll get started with the coaching right away. You can ask your questions. We have a pantry purge coming up. We're kind of on ramping. So I usually like to close my um, boot camps a week ahead of time, but this week's been crazy with the Spartan. So um, I like to get people in there as soon as possible because it helps you set the tone for when you're well prepared for Monday, May 7th, which is coming Monday for the start date, that's really key because if you start out right on track ahead of your game, you've just are it's like steam engine throughout the whole program. It just, I've seen it time and time again. It goes way better if you can get in early and get yourself prepared because you're gonna have a lot of things to print off. I'm gonna have you get organized. I, there's some tips on the webpage about how to get organized so that it makes it, I believe that being organized makes these kinds of programs seamless and you get so much more out of it if you're organized and you know where your stuff is because you know how we are. And if it's like, oh, I can't find that recipe or I can't find that meal plan, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just gonna eat um, JoJo's and let's see. Um, let me stop my screen share here, see if I can get back to you. I don't know if it's still recording. There we go. I'm sorry, I lost you. I don't know what happened. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Um, yeah, I lost you guys. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened there. But I better wrap it up because I only scheduled an hour and a half for this. And I think we've already hit our hour and a half. Okay, you guys. Um, I would love to have you join me for the program. If you have questions, just email me and I can answer your questions. You can fill out the application and then I'll give you a call and see where you fit into the program if private or semi-private or group training works for you. Thank you guys so much for joining me for the webinar. I'm going to send you all a replay too if you want to go back and review some of the information. Um, I will also send you a link to those workouts that in case you didn't grab them from here. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. I've got to get, there we go, get myself back here. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. I'm going to myself. Okay, I will talk to you guys soon. Take good care. Bye-bye.